might be something that OMG has to watch out for, bringing numbers themselves, because if they try to go for, you know, that hot Lee Sin kick coming in, uh, comboed up with Icon or SMLZ there, and if 5 is not really paying attention, not in the area of Xiang isn't as well, then that's something that can go up against them, and that's something they'll have to watch out for. Yeah, it certainly is. But Chao Gu, certainly well aware of this, are going to have to prepare themselves as we've loaded onto the rift for game number one between Chao Gu and OMG. I'm trying to figure out what champion that was. I actually have no idea. Varus, maybe? Oh, the fans are going crazy here. Yeah. They could be Varus. You can hear them calling out as Icon. We mentioned how important it would be for him to show up this game. Well, he's on a very high skill making, or uh, high skill cap champion, very high playmaking champion. Yeah, he's got. It, we're we're gonna find out very shortly. <laughs> yeah, and I think the biggest point between Oriana, because the Oriana was picked into this, is the Oriana does have range into this. Uh, even the or, uh, Icon, once he does go back for tier, he's gonna come back into lane, and he's gonna be able to shove in pretty heavily. Nothing really of note in terms of the picks here. Yeah, he's even taking the Storm Raider Surge. Interestingly enough, so too is Doinby. Looking for the mechanical plays yeah, on that's that Oriana actually. instead of the burst. Yeah, I would expect him to go uh, Thunderlords. And a big point of that is that he does have the range advantage. So that's a, a that's always a constant worry for Rise is that, you know, once a lot of AP comes down onto Doinby, he's going to be able to just QW every time to be able to chunk you down. And then, of course, one of the big points of setup in the mid lane is set up ball, able to just use your uh, ulti. Set up uh, Icon for, you know, Clit to be able to come in and gank. And oh, but ganks. World 6, very cheesy. Shows up and level 2 in lane. Heal instantly used by Doinby. He's not even going to burn his flash to walk out of this. But that is a lot of lane pressure that Doinby's got to sack. Yeah, that's incredibly cheesy for that level 2 gank to come through. And it was because Oriana was going to have shove here. And it helps Icon out so much. And World 6 was just in transition to his next buff. He didn't take the Raptor camp. Because he can't easily send, it's going to be very difficult. He didn't take Wolf Camp, he just said, he just went buff to buff. Yeah, he took the scenic route. Yeah, <laughs> definitely a scenic. And stop by, check that Doinby in the mid lane. Are you paying attention? Yeah, you're paying attention. You right. awake now? Yeah, exactly. Doinby, he's awake now. He's yeah, now he's, he's had a sip of coffee, and you know what? I guess that's, a, that's it's probably better than coffee. Those yawns Near that we saw earlier. Yeah, he saw that yawn. Uh, yeah, yeah, hopefully he's... Uh, Wide awake at this point as Icon with the wave bouncing right back. It's huge priority. A lot of OMG fans in the house. 84% of people think that it is OMG going to take this set. Yeah, the iconic all Chinese organization. That's right, see what through. you did there. Ha! I mean, to be fair, when I started off that disc at that point, I it was it was not on purpose. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Then. Um, but yeah, they've, they've stuck around for a very long time. And the fact that they're on that upsurge is really bringing back the fans. Whew. Yeah, they're going to have to demonstrate that they deserve these fans, though. Because Chao Gu's not going to roll over easy and let them take this. This is going to be a big point, because Lee Sin into Graves is really tough. Oh, Thank God. Yeah, the he... smite. But he had his smite as well. Yeah, but he World 6 has to watch out for that, because he his pathing in the first uh, clear was very limited, just so he can get to the, uh, the Scuttle Crab below. Oh, that actually Ooh, hit double him? Double catches five. One auto attack is all it takes, but they know he's got healed. That's going to be one, and Ali actually gets first blood by Flash, Ebb, and Flow. I can't believe that bubble hit him. Check out Icon, though, with his push priority in mid lane. He's making his way bottom That's into a, a minion wave. That's a little ambitious. The guy has to go right back mid. Just trying to scare him, I see. Uh, but yeah, that was that was ridiculous. I actually did not expect Nami to be able to get that. If Nami can get those picks, then 100% that's fantastic, and that makes it that much easier. Xiang has to watch out here. Oh, whoa! Oh. Instant reaction. She is awake. Xiang's awake. Yeah, he just <laughs> he was recognizing that. It's like, all right, any moment, any time, I just gotta make it look flashy. Yeah. I feel like Kabe even missed that too. I, I don't know. I'm gonna give him benefit of the doubt. It was pretty close. The yeah. Shen hitbox is pretty fat. Yeah. Like there are times when you get caught by the shadow dash and you're like, I was already on the other side of lane. To be true, it used to be worse. It used yeah, to be really yeah. big. And uh, and now now it's, it's smaller. Yeah. Oh, but Chao Gu looking to get some revenge as SMLZ baits in Ali and alone. That's going to be a quick slow. A 
Ali holding on to everything he can as he used to slash aggressively. Teleport used by Kabe to get there first. Remember, Xiang doesn't have any teleport. They turn on to five, and they get the kill before trying to leave alone. He's a lot, but Clint is going to oh. take these hits. Xiang still has got enough, and Kabe taking the long route around. Has got to take some damage on his way out. I got even ghosts to get down here as well, and Doinby is here too. Are they going to dive this at five minutes into the game? They've got a minion wave. Nah, they, this is too risky. Nah, they're... they're oh, oh. Doinby's waiting oh. just outside of Vision. He's going to have to walk through many members of OMG, however. Yeah, and decides to head back towards the mid lane, and OMG call it quits. But that's what we were talking about. Chao Gu, with such an early TP coming in from Kabe, was able to get that, and OMG was prepared. It was just that 1v1 one on one trade. And it worked so well for OMG. That was scary. I mean, sure, OMG would have rather gotten the kill on Ali. Alone played it really well to body block for Ali because Ali could have very easily died. Yeah. But it didn't work that way because it OMG. It was Alone who died. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll save you, Mr. President. No, I'm dead. <laughs> oh. I mean, that is the point of a bodyguard, but when the bodyguard's the president, then that uh, takes a different turn. Uh. Five very aggressively invading with Icon and okay. World 6 again. They're on top of a ward, though. That is the they most all get hopped over the wall. Ali is right there. Clid is going to get some damage. Now suddenly OMG have got to get out of here. Yeah, Ali, can capture. he get the big bubble? Yeah, they're, they're, they're good. They're Clippy's fine. there as well. Clid can't get in range for the slow, and OMG are investing so much time down here. Yeah, that was the most valuable ward that caught the three of them on rotation. And so, you know what? Now they got to go back. Yeah, wards save lives. I remember, Whenever I see those wards, it's like, ah, the possibilities. If that ward wasn't there, that could have turned into such a ter like an awful play. Uh, yeah. Or, yeah, but you know what? Yeah, you mentioned it. Wards save lives. Just 75 gold, everybody out there. So, uh, invest. Doin B plays himself a jaunty tune as he continues to clear out these minions. Xiang with lane pressure. And an early haunting guys invades the blue buff. Clid showing himself on the opposite side of the map isn't there to contest. And Doin B is going to feel a little disappointed when he uses all his mana this time. Nah, he's going to be pretty sad. He better... Uh, he better relax in the mid lane right now until Clid confirms that the blue buff indeed is not there. Clid's actually pathing down towards the bottom side as well. So it seems like... Oh no, he was just cheating bottom to clear out the wolf camp. Never yeah. mind. There they go. Here we go. Let's test it out, boys. Now look. Wait. Uh, wait a second. What's happening? That's a sad life. At least he still has a significant majority of his mana. Yeah, so he didn't try and uh, overuse it when the mid lane before just to test it out. So OMG are going hard this game. World 6 now going to invade the red buff as it spawns. Does he know? He definitely, yeah, okay. That, that was the defensive ping out of OMG. Yeah. So I don't think they saw him, but instead he's just going to play it safe. Doesn't quite have vision of that uh, Graves just yet. I was wondering if World 6 knew the ward was there still. I think that was the same ward that caught him out last time. Oh, yeah, the super valuable one. Oh, yeah. no, he didn't want to invade the red buff. Icon was just like, I need blue now. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> the commanding mid laner. Come back. Don't take that red buff. Yeah, Clid now going to be able to secure that red buff. Refreshes the ward that was so cost efficient earlier. Just in case. Yeah, and it's such a good ward. I mean, we, we don't people don't talk about that a lot because that ward does cover the blast cone that comes out there. Mm -hmm. So being able to catch that, because that's the primary place where junglers, mostly mid laners, are able to try and get a flank going for their team. Um, just getting that ward out there means so much. You can already see a lot of defensive vision from Chaogu on that side of the map, plus two control wards top side in the river to keep an eye on any sort of movements out of OMG. They are well aware of whatever OMG is going to do well before they do it. And with an Infernal Dragon as the first Drake, that's certainly going to be important to maintain that vision on the bottom side of the map. Yeah, so it turns into a question of which pressure is stronger here in the mid and bottom lane. Uh, do and be Sure, he doesn't have blue buff, and that's probably going to be the most costly point. Theoretically, Orianna should be great in terms of just forcing the shove right now, but Icon could probably just spam E for days, and it would be okay for him. And then in the bottom lane, you got Varus and Nami, and Varus should just be fine at this point, especially now he has double long swords, got a, a, a quite a few levels into Q. Yeah, he's starting to lance out some shots against SMLZ, but the very early tier and not a serrated Dirk is going to make it a little bit more difficult. Yeah, and he's really far behind in terms of CS, so Jin yeah. and Lulu are able to really uh, take their number a little bit. The early pressure and then the follow-up kill onto Alone is just yielding a few rewards here. Yeah. Able to make up for that deficit that SMLZ found himself in. 
It just doesn't make it easier. Uh, the, sure, Nami was able to net them the first kill. But it's definitely difficult to contest the shove. Man, that ward. Yeah, OMG are looking for kills so desperately, so greedy. They're hunting for these. Yachagu, they've still got vision. Doinbi knows that they're there. There There's we go. Ghost. Flash snare is going to be enough. Doinbi didn't see that coming, even if he saw them in the river. He's going to try to kite this out, however, as Kabe gets there. Lanceton onto Icon. Doinbi eats the auto attack from Icon, who, empowered by picks, is enough to take Xion's the kill. in there. Yo, that was a huge kick from World 6, getting very oh, greedy. No. Knocked out of the Realm Warp, in fact, as even Xion roamed down. Now OMG turns to the Infernal Drake. That entire play was seen by OMG, but unfortunately, Doom, he thought he was playing cute around it. Still didn't do much about it. Dies, Sombrero, so he couldn't actually get them going, move him away from him, so he dies to the play. Shen tries to do something to save him, obviously couldn't do it, so then he just it just it just turned into snowballed. Sure he didn't die, but overall that just turns into a free dragon. Ooh, Icon eats a few hits, trying to stop the recall out of Clid, but Doin B completes his own. Going for the fiendish codex and boots first. He's not gonna fall for that same mistake twice. Gets more movement speed to escape and he sort of chases. But with the Infernal Drake for OMG, they get a brief respite before they will return to hunting for more picks uh, on OMG's side. Yeah, and while Graves has been at a good point of just clearing out his own jungle pretty quickly, yeah. now that Lee Sin's able to get his TM at, now he's actually able to just match him. So now he's e he's even, and now he's just kind of just battling through it. So it's, it's good to see him on the TM at. He might just sit on it for now. Um, We've seen a while back, oh goodness, we saw some Titanic Hydra release in, which is hilarious to see <laughs> in solo queue. I think that was about the same time people were going for the Titanic Hydra uh, Rek'Sai as well. Yeah. Back when Titanic used to have the same amount of attack damage and health. Um, no so war. very strong. But yeah, as you said, mostly sins. Like to sit on that team at for mm. quite some time. Looks like he is going for the Warriors enchant first. As Chao Gu are going to collapse onto Xion. He's got his flash, but is not going to waste it. Quick movements from Clid and Doinbi. So the difference between OMG and Chaogu here is, you know, OMG, the wards were doing very I mean, Chaogu's wards to the bottom lane saved them out. OMG didn't have any wards at the top side. Now OMG are going to try to answer to this. They're sending two men to the bottom lane. They've only got one minion, though. Varus is clearing out that wave so quickly. First turret goes down in favor of Chao Gu, and despite the fact that World 6 is here trying to catch the minion wave, they've got Stan United in just a short while. Teleport's already ready from Kabe. Four members of OMG are going to be a bit desperate for this play, but nobody's escorting the minions forward. Alone they don't need is the just going to start clearing them they out. They just need to go in. That's yeah, what there they go. They're forcing the engage. That's Silence onto alone. He's caught by the snare, trying to stay Stay alive, but World 6 follows up and gets the kill. Kabe teleports oh. in too late as Ali is knocked up. Kabe has joined, but so too has Xion. That's going to be the curtain call as well. They're blowing everything and the kitten's kitchen sink to get this kill. The kitten sink. Nah, that'd be good. <laughs> Kittens in a sink are adorable, but that kill was anything but. But yeah, they just needed to go in because you can tell that Alone and Ali were constantly clearing out the wave. They just needed to all in hard engage. They did. It was at the cost of five life. But you know what? Xiaogu recognized that entire play. They're going to get the top lane inner tower. Yeah, top tier two traded back over for that bottom tier one and a handful of kills, bringing it right back to dead, even in gold. World six on the invade will take away that red buff on the way out as OMG will also get the chance to set up some wards. But more importantly, they have unlocked their bottom lane. Five is going to get the chance to roam around with World 6 now. And we've already seen what happens when Icon starts popping off. At 2.0 -oh and 2, the clock is ticking. Yeah, thankfully for uh, Chagu, he's on Rise, which is not that mobile. He can't dash around like Ari. Yeah, well, he does have the Realm Orb. That's true. And so he's almost level 11. That's the incredible dash, cross map dash. Yeah. Yeah, if he does that, then that's going to be great. I mean, we've seen some incredible Rise plays happen. But, yeah. So Rise is just turning into a, such a massive priority lately in the LPL because teams have looked towards IEM, saw the plays you can make, especially if you have barrened up minion waves. You can just kind of do the hot swap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, old switcheroo. Yeah, and so this is that's always fun to see. That's. Yeah, it's, it's like a magic trick. It's like follow the minions, follow the minions. They're here, they're gone. You see us, you see us, you don't. <laughs> yeah, now we're here, now we're not. Um, but as it resets, OMG do initiate the lane swap, sending SMLZ and five into the mid lane, along with Icon towards the bottom, so we can get solo experience working towards that level 11. Going be going to shove up with alone and start peppering some harass onto this tier one turret. If they can break it down, that would be huge. Yeah, Chagu, they don't have any. I mean, Chagu, this should be a 
free tower if this remains the same like rise is moving now this is great he should have moved a lot earlier because omg don't have any wave clear yet yeah, their wave clear essentially is going to be in the rise because smlz is not going to be able to do that five is not a key lulu so he doesn't have much damage in himself so if Chagu constantly look towards these sieges, OMG just need to hard engage, uh, just threaten the flank. They need to do whatever they can to break it. Yeah, and that's exactly what we saw from Icon. He's level 11 now, so he could have ganked mid, um, and it would have taken Kabe stand united to keep up with him. But of course, he is still holding on to that as Joinby catches minions on that top side of the map. Things take a quick breather. We get some buys and some resets. As it looks like Yomu's is now finished for alone. World 6 sitting deep inside the jungle of Chaogu. This is World 6, man. He's always fishing for a play. This is a moment where he recognizes that Rise is in the bottom lane dealing with that Shen. Sure, Shen is not a fast kill, but maybe it's something that they can look into. Yeah. Speaking of fishing, it might be a mermaid that they catch as Ali Ooh. looping around. Oh, they, he has no uh, idea that they're there. Get him. Gets right oh. around the kick. Oh. He's going to find Clint as well. They immediately turn targets for the Cigar Man, but they don't quite have enough. It is going to be Ali who dies as Clint. Manages to survive the onslaught of Xiang, who overextends and trades his life one for one. Yeah, Xiang was just trying to keep in range so he can get his ulti off, but he found himself to be the, re the result in that, just the kill. Looks like Icon. Oh, that's a very greedy recall, Clid. <laughs> Icon just wanted to inter interrupt that. That's hilarious. But Ocean Drake is up in 15 seconds, and the Fisherman's uh, Hunt provides fruits. Though it is a one-for-one -one trade, they do still have priority on that bottom side of the map. OMG are setting up a bunch of wards. They've got the mobility for Rise to do the triangle play, rotating bot mid, bot mid, dragon. Jiaogu are going to try to reset this. They're shoving mid and looking for this tier one turret, but they just can't do it. Here's the thing, Jiaogu, they should have priority towards mid lane turret. And also because that this is so hard for SMLZ and 5 to remain here. That's why it's on OMG to constantly look for the plays like they did the last time and execute on it. Because that last play, it would have been a lot better if Lee Sin hit Q. That was a problem there. It's unfortunately he couldn't get that on stun targets. This time around, they need to just constantly look to push him through because it's actually Xiaogu that have pressure on Dragon because they're on mid. Yeah, despite the vision setup, despite the pick, and despite the fight, it's Xiaogu who end up moving more cohesively as a unit when the Dragon spawns. They're going to take that. So, the age-old question, fire versus water, we're going to find out. Yeah, and I think that, like, when I look at Xiaogu here, they just have so much pressure towards mid lane. Usually it's like, if you're like last time, like the last series we saw, it's like, oh, IG can't really look to get onto that tower because the wave clear is constant. There's no wave clear here for OMG. They are at the, they're at the whims of Xiaogu's pressure here. So. Yeah, that wave clear is all the way down in the bottom lane. Mm -hmm. Currently finishing off his uh, Monomune, uh, excuse me, uh, Archangel Staff. Yeah. Not Monomune, and that's the one that uh, we're going to see alone build. Yep, that's true. We've seen so many double tiers. I mean, I guess... Yeah, we've seen so many double tiers lately in these uh, comps. Not, not in this game. Yeah. But I guess Whenever we see the Varus and the Rise together, or yeah. the Cassiopeia. Yeah. Pretty much just like Varus, Ezreal, Rise, Cassiopeia, those four. I guess you get, you get a lot of practice in terms of. Is this Mana Moon? Is that. Oh, yeah, 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 this yeah, one? yeah. I have that problem. Um, but we're now getting closer and closer to the 20 minute mark. 90 seconds left on that Rift Herald of No MG. They swing Icon back towards the mid lane after he pushes a wave up before sending him bottom. And it seems like right now, Chao Gu, they're setting a 4-1, whereas OMG are using a 1-3-1. So Xiang and Icon continue to alternate pushes. We saw uh, Kabe try to teleport top to defend, but... Oh, did oh, he get the red buff? It. Wow! That man. Cleared with the collateral damage. There we go. Doinbi finally heads top to answer the minion wave that Xiang shoved in. He just knew how much damage that Lee Sin did going into it. And he saw he saw Lulu using damage on that. So he kind of just predicted on based on essentially how much damage A and plus B would do. So I, like, that was great. I like to think he had it perfectly calculated. Yep. He knew how much damage that the red buff would have at 19 minutes into the game. Or how much health. He knew how much damage uh, Tiamat Lee Sin's going to do with Warrior and Jin. Yeah. Counted the abilities, counted the seconds. Yeah. I'm, I'm making Doin B out to be some sort of like... The mastermind. Exactly, like a genius. So just looking at... Uh, here's the problem with Jagu versus OMG. Right now, 19 minutes into the game. OMG, even though they're really trying hard to just not get poked out uh, in the mid lane, they're setting a lot of side lanes. Rumble's on top side, or at least was on top side, because he's now rotating towards the bot side. That's going to be interesting to see why he's doing that. Meanwhile, Rumble has been constantly shoving out through bots. So... It, the longer this goes, OMG's winning out, but if Xiaogu can quickly output this pressure, this should be their tower. Yeah, 
now Lone's finally able to get a few more hits onto the turret. Doimbi gets in. Shockwave flings World 6 back. Chains of Corruption just a bit late alone. Yeah, they should be able to get it on the next wave, but Graves, he's just clearing out wards here. He should I, just be with them. Xiong has teleport and the equalizer. The minion wave is getting there, but Xiong is already halfway oh there. Icon God. forces the fight. Flash snaring onto Doinbi. What was that? Here comes Xiong from the side. Stan United is ready for Kave as collateral damage continues SLB. to harass OMG down. And Xiong, now he's having some second thoughts. Yeah, he's going to have to come in to protect. He still has his ulti, so he could use it defensively on the next wave. They just want to be able to stall this one out. Yeah, and Chao Gu actually find themselves with sideline pressure in the top lane. Icon has to answer that. There's the defensive equalizer, as you said. Yeah, but they're There's... still going to be able to get this one. Oh, Clid eats a lot of damage, perhaps too much, as he's knocked back, and Doinby and Clid are going to demolish World 6 as the bullets don't do anywhere near enough damage out of SNLZ. So there we go. Chao Gu finally gets that mid lane tower. It was a long time coming on that one. And Clay does a lot of damage, so World 6 finds out the hard way. That was a little, uh, was a little, yeah, was a little yeah. rough to see. He prioritized the lease in. He knew he had to have known. Yeah. We hope he knew. Maybe he just doesn't know. No, he knows. <laughs> he just uh, hoped. Yeah. Prayed. Well, hope can only get you so far against uh, in the LPL. We've seen hope help some teams and betray others, but... This time it's OMG who are looking very hopeful as they now find themselves down about 1,200 gold. We've got Dragon now up in two minutes, and with that mid tier one finally cracked down, Chao Gu have got their sights set on bottom. Doinbi Ali roaming down to that bottom side. Xiong well aware, already backing away. So good macro sense from OMG to know that could be the next pressure point, but nobody's defending top. Yeah, being able to take down that mid lane turret means a lot to Chao Gu because now they that extra wave shoved in means that Jin is not going to be there for the play. He's still clearing out the wave coming in there, so you have to completely sack that turret now. And that's just going to be outer turret after outer turret after outer turret. That's going to be the final one here. OMG's not going to have much to stand on, but that's it's still going to be fine for OMG in the sense that they do still have a lot of playmaking potential that they can work off of. Rumble still now has his three item power spike with the Leandris, like the double magic penetration here. So if he does look for that play where he can get a perfect ulti, then that's going to be great for him, especially with Lee Sin kind of just fishing for a play on his ulti. So uh, that's a possibility. As a follow-up to that turret trade, it ends up being a total of two for one turrets when it's all said and done, but Chao Gu still coming up big. 50 seconds left on that dragon, and with the turret pressure now cleared up from OMG, you've got a recall out of Alone, finishing off that next serrated Dirk for him, along with Maul of Malmordius topped off for Clit. Kabe up top. <laughs> Finishing off that Jarum's Fist for some more survivability. And with his teleport and Stan United ready, looks like Chao Gu are prepped for that dragon, should it turn into a fight. Tragically, though, it is Cloud Drake. So yeah. we're not expecting the teams to be at each other's throats over it. Wow, that arrow. Yeah, these arrows. These He's arrows. got an arrow and a straight at Dirk. Yeah, it's going to get much, much or worse. Yomus. Yeah, Yomus. Oh, an uh, icon uh, flanking uh. from the side. That's not going to mean too much. Rushes right on in. He actually used Ghost very preemptively there. Yeah, it's not going to mean too much here for uh, Ch Chagu since they are strong and together. With that oh, being they've said, going with the snare. World oh! six with a huge kick is going to force the fight. Icon joins the fight a bit late, but Kabe cleans up with Glid. Doinby is doing some work with Glid and Kabe in the front, continuing to zone it around. Xiong eats a huge amount of damage, and they just can't find a way in. They cannot get through this huge shit. Oh. Who lands the taunt onto Icon? He goes down. Yeah, and you know what? Rumble is fairly low too, so he's got to back away entirely. That's a massive play for uh, World 6, but you know who does more damage? Clint! Yep! <laughs> Graves does damage! And so that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a win for Chaogu. Uh, that's, that's ridiculous though. That was still such an amazing play, but still wasn't able to get it through. Just take a look at this. The combination on it. Rumble, even though he, they were able to get off of it, you know, Clint still saves himself and just oh. bop! Pow. Oh, Doinby, I just can't. I, I'm feeling it. Doinby flashed out of the kick. He saw that coming the moment World 6 dashed in. Yeah. Amazing. And then he followed up with that huge shockwave. The shockwave into the uh, collateral damage. Yeah, that yeah. Was, that's always great to see. So he's doing a lot of damage right now. He's already finished up his Luden's Echo. Got himself Athene's and Holy Grail. Why? Because it's Doinby. Usually see, <laughs> uh, usually see Orianas go towards a lot of damage into the magic penetration, but he's decided yeah. he's going to be very utility here because not only is he going towards the Athene's and Holy Grail, he's going towards Zonia's as well. So he's just not going to deal as much damage as other Orianas. 
but he's going to be incredibly helpful. Yo, they're pinging team. Baron right now. They've yeah. got vision wards all around the pick. Excuse me, control wards. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. They're just going to sweep it out. Xiong is racing towards that top side of the map. Still no stand United just yet out of Kabe as they're contesting the red buff. Trying to see who got that. Looks like it was Clit. Uh, no, oh, it was, was SMLZ. Got it. yeah. He's got the he new got cooldown it. on yeah. it. Yeah. So was, he, he was able to get it, thankfully. It's, you always want it on Jin, anyways. Unfortunately for Jin, he doesn't have the rapid. Um, yeah, rapid start kind of just yet. So he doesn't have much range. He's just going to be based off of his ulti a lot of the damage, unless if the fight's safe enough to come in. So the red buff won't actually mean too much. Yeah, it seems like SMLZ is going all in on the uh, curtain called Jin. Double penetration. We'll see if that's a dust blade or an infinity edge. Whether he wants to be auto attacking or landing abilities. Yeah. Chagu are contesting everything that OMG have. Jeez, these, yeah. they're like repo men. We're gonna need your house. We're gonna need your car. We're gonna need your bathtub. Oh, your cat? Yeah, that comes. That's yeah, coming with cat, us too. Cat's coming with us too. Yeah. Mm. Cloud Drake wasn't even doing anything. Chagu just took it. Yeah, I mean, this, this, they're just taking the rest of the map at this point. This is Chagu. They recognize they have a lead at this point. It may be a 2K gold advantage, but man, God, uh, compositionally, they're just. There's no way that OMG can come in unless if they make that play. Because even taking Scott, stop. The range from Duinbi, the range from Alone, the even the range from Clid, it's so tough to be able to deal with that OMG have to go into that all-in engage. And they tried for it, and it's just not perfect yet. As it is, with nothing else left on the map for Chaoku to take, they decide to secure some vision around the Baron just in the case that they're able to find a pick or a good opportunity with Xiong on the opposite, opposite side of the map with no teleport. He does luckily, however, have one right now and OMG well aware of that, continuing to set up a defensive bastion around the mid lane. Oh, they're for but it. they're sneaking the Baron right now and there is no vision out of OMG. SMLZ has got his blue trinket. He's gonna they drop it know. down. It's immediately on top of the ward. And they're gonna try to uh, get the Scryer's Bloom and Kao Gu finally back away. Best thing about Strider's Bloom is that it does get vision of Baron for 12 seconds here. So that's 12 seconds of solace for the team here. Chagu are going to decide. Wait a yeah, minute. Who did they find? Race forward. Just World 6. Okay. Glitz just sending a message. Yep. This is my jungle. Get out of here. Repo men, Chagu. Takes a puff of his cigar. What are you doing here? <laughs> As the traps are going to do what they can to deny the minions. Icon splitting on one side with Kabe on the other. Who's going to be faster pressuring the tier two with Icon hesitating? Looks like it is Kabe finally pulling Xiang back as Chao Gu continue to invade into the jungle of OMG, taking away the Gromp, taking away the Raptors. An important about, uh, thing about this too is that Shen is able to just go into the bottom lane here. He has his Titanic Hydra. Whew. Relax there. Uh, he's going to be able to just constantly shove in. Maybe not, he doesn't want to do it when Rumble's there because you know, then Rumble's just going to hard commit. World 6 finds Ali all alone and can't even kill him. Yeah, he's, a, he's he's afraid for a reason. Even though the bubble was misused, he knew that if he fully commits to that, then the rest of his team, Varus and Oriana, were still there. He didn't want to get into that if his team was not really yeah. in position. Don't want to take any chances. Ben 4 would have done it, though. Oh, yeah. Ben definitely. 4 would have, yeah. But this is World 6. Like, Ben 4 is like the fourth Ben, but this is the sixth There's world. a lot of numbers here, that's fair. Yeah. And he has his 5. He's got 5. Yeah, okay. 9, 5, 7 in the previous one. Yeah. Uh, but Chao Gu continuing to steal everything they can from OMG. You made this? No, I made this. Just taking everything. Instead, OMG find themselves at a bit of a loss here. The er early aggression and uh, focus towards that bottom lane that they saw success with is now stymied as Chao Gu are just moving more cohesively as a unit. Yeah, but to be fair to OMG, there's not much they can move towards. They're trying to defend, but it's unless if they get the all in play, and with that being said, they get caught out again. Yeah. These vision wards are getting are just catching them in rotation at all times. The late sweeper out of five. Oh, Clint's still gonna face check right into it, but he's got Doinby right behind him. I recognize this play. This is Chao Gu Reapers circa 2015. Bringing Kabe oh, in for the okay. fight as well. Five goes down. A yet another Lulu assassination. I mean, they caught him on the ward. Clid walks in acting like he's the one getting caught. But then you're like, no, nah, nah, I knew this was happening. And so this is a tough one. Lulu's not there. 
Lulu oh, is really Icon's going to force the fight onto Doinby. He immediately drops the Zanyas. Ali in the back, but Doinby has got to leave over the Equalizer. Shockwave is still going to find two as SMLZ cancels the curtain call early. Clid is trying to do some damage to Xiyoung as a huge kick from oh. the World 6. He's going to knock Clid right back into the fight. That's the Realm Ward from Icon. He's going to bring Xiyoung right back on top of Doinby. And in the chaos of the fight, it appears that OMG, they've traded one for three so far. And Doinby will dissuade the rest of OMG. Baron could be on the table here, though. It's so good for Chagu that alone is the only one of up because even though OMG got such a massive fight for them, they can't convert with Baron. He will just poke them down, and he's in vision too. They might actually might just steal this. Now that's gonna happen. But yeah, still that was a massive win for OMG. But no, they're going in. They're double down on this. Yeah, that's a teleport from Chiang to bring himself back at full health. World six, despite being below half, he's gonna try to back it up. That's an arrow at World six, but heal is used to keep him topped off. He's almost got another one ready, but he's snared by the deadly flourish. Doinby goes in, but does not get the steal. That's Baron picked up after a successful fight from OMG. Shockwave pins five against the wall. There's another auto attack. Doinby just needs one more, and he solo kills five yet again. Yeah, and the guy just comes up from base, and then he's dead again. Six deaths to his name. It's something that he's kind of used to at this point. But just take a look at this. This was a great fight from OMG overall, and it just started from that Rumble ulti. If there was one thing OMG needed, it was Xiang to get a fantastic ulti for himself, and he got it just there. But look at this play. Boom. SMLZ fourth bullet gets him. That was a really solid ult. <laughs> he just killed him too. Yeah. So that was perfect from SMLB. It was perfect from World 6 and Si Young. They need to continuously get those plays working for them if they want to win this game. Now Baron is definitely a priority for OMG if they can use it effectively to start breaking some turrets. But Chao Gu, they're calling the bluff. They're moving offensively faster than OMG are and prep a wave on that bottom tier two turret. You can't, you can't siege into this. Yeah. But Chaogu are doing it. This is the best, you know, the best uh, defense is definitely an offense. Run, the rise is down, so they recognize that they cannot take a team fight into Chaogu. They're going to look to siege off oh, of this. Oh, that's the shockwave used as World 6 looks for Doinby and just eats a lot of damage in answer. Late Redemption is going to top Doinby off. Really and World 6 goes back in once again. He kicks, but he kicks Doinby away. Kabe in the front is soaking a lot. That's Guardian Angel on top of World 6. He's able to fling himself out. Doinby is at such low health. Oh, they're going to have to sacrifice somebody here. They're juggling the bullet. Oh, and the my. fourth hits alone. Nobody dies. Chaogu, siege into a Baron, take a fight, and walk away with their lives. And you know what this does? This saves up a lot of time, because I don't know what happened to Icon for him to die, but that was just a fight that Clid and the rest of Chaogu were able to make for themselves. So now that, yeah, you have you have a, a Baron buff, now how, mu how much of it are you going to use? Sure, that should have been a success for you. Sure, it's like a 1k gold uh, Baron power play, but what does it really even yeah. mean? More than half the duration of that Baron is gone. They've got 90 seconds left, and the only thing they're going to get so far is that mid-tier 1 turret. With Chao Gu freshly recalled and Kabe up top with his teleport, the mid-tier 1, tier 2, is still standing. And it looks like Cloud Drake is going to be the consolation prize for OMG, a weak second. It's, it's the Cloud Dragon, the Cloud Dragon, <laughs> but you know what, whatever. Uh, I mean, when you get Baron buff, you want to take like a turret, yeah. make it a tier two, perhaps try to break the in, uh, break the inhib line. They got a cloud break. That's, that's all they can really take off of it. That was just a really smart play from Chaogu to be able to force them into that position. Um, so that that sucks for uh, OMG, but now they're gonna re pressure onto the map. They can't really. They're not gonna have to. Ooh. Yeah, they're not gonna think about the Baron buff anymore. All it really is to just answer to Chaogu's pressure that they've been outputting. Chaogu now. Swing themselves towards the top side of the map. Moving very quickly as a unit. And once again, sieging into the Baron buff of OMG. OMG are grouped as five. Icon has got his Realm Warp. And Kabe's got to stand united as well. Yeah, and you made a, a bit of a question about what Jin was going to go towards. We saw the IE Jin, or we saw the uh, Death Duskblade Jin. It's the Duskblade Jin, and it makes a lot of sense. Why? Because he's been doing a lot of damage with his ulti. Yeah. I, I was so surprised when Alone was. 70% HP down to just 10 HP. So <laughs> World 6 is going in. Yeah, he's going to have to back away, though. And at the sides instead, as he's spotted out by a defensive ward from Chao Gu, Kabe's continuing to split push and working towards that tier 2. Xiang still doesn't have his teleport. Finally, they send Icon to answer it, but they also see that Xiang in World 6 is missing as well. That's a Realm Warp. They're going to try to force this play onto Kabe. Icon rushes forward. He's got Ghost, but no Flash. But Kabe is very tanky. Rise should be able to run. chase him as well. 
This is going to be such a slow Kabe play. drops the Randuins. Icon still hasn't ghosted and decides to let him off with only a warning. Chao Gu, meanwhile, gave up the push on the opposite side of the map, decided to recall and reset back in the middle. So we get to the 35-minute mark. It is dead even in gold. Very nearly dead even in turrets at 5 to 3, and very similar in kills as well at 12 to 10. Yeah, just taking stock of this, uh, Rumble is pretty big now. He has himself the... No, the uh, dust, the death cap. So he has so many items. One away from fi being full build, but he has the control ward. So honestly, he might even not, he might not want to part away from that. So right now they're so massive. If they can get another play like they did the last, 100% the Rumble ulti will be even more impactful this time around. But the GA was built up by Kabe too. So Kabe he is a tanking beast. Yeah, he could afford to go a little deep now. And you, even taking stock of how deep he was going last time, he was going so deep. Yeah. This guy's going to be in the middle of the earth the next time. This guy is... <laughs> He's going to end up on the uh, Arctic Poles. Yeah, that man a little bit too far deep. This team probably can't help him out on that one, but they'll try. Yeah, Kabe, very familiar with the mole people. Very deep. All right. Now we are too deep. As, yeah. As it is, Elder Dragon is up in a few minutes, and Baron up in another two. OMG now setting up on that bottom side of the map, knowing that that could be a priority later on. Xiaogu have got some vision on the top side, so you can see how the teams are playing around those big buff uh, priorities. And this is, I'm just going to draw this back into Orianna's build, because doing B, he, he goes through these interesting uh, mid-game builds that, sure, it's going to be great for your composition, kind of, when you're kind of trying to uh, support alone and clid in a lot of ways but the problem is as the game goes on you suddenly you still have athenes on holy grail on you instead of a rabbit on a death cap yeah so you're just going to get to and even just like um a Leandre's torment so when you get those impactful ultis they're not going to be doing nearly as much damage as you want them to mm -hmm. and so uh, with how strong smlz is with how five is able to just impact his team with his ulti um, it's going to be tough so they need to be able to end this game now or they need to be able to, you know, get Clit in a fantastic position in the fight. Yeah. It certainly well could be that uh, Doinby decided to go for the early priority as a lone. He doesn't see him anymore. Yeah, just keeps walking around. Okay. Curtain call used by SMLZ. We've seen Doinby adapt his build before. I mean, even with the Karma going for the Athens on Holy Grail, Rylai's rush into yeah. Leandris for early effectiveness, then swapping it over for the Luden's route on Void Staff later on. So certainly he is capable of adapting perhaps just looking for that early utility, which has been able to net quite a lot of advantages. Five turrets to three. Yeah, I guess uh, that's it. that's that's always nice for him. We'll see how it works out. The problem is just uh, the efficiency of it just At, at this point in time, yeah. yeah. It's, it, comparatively, you would rather have like a Rabadons on top of that. Yeah, so we'll see how much gold he can get so he can make that shift. Baron oh, has now spawned, and Chaogu are setting up a lot of vision around it. Ali eats some harass from the Baron as OMG are not going to give them that control for free. Yeah, but Chagu, they are in the right position. They just need to stall this out, not get caught out. Oh, oh I, I don't know if he meant to make it over the wall there. As the Sonic Wave hits, OMG are actually going to rush towards the mid lane, but Al Alone is already there. Going to oh. have to fire some arrows into that minion wave to clear it out. OMG are rushing for this because Shen is in the bottom side of yeah. the map, and he's looking to get a tower. So right now, they're going for a play as fast as possible because Rumble is not there to catch Kabe. Yeah, the Titanic Hydra long been finished for Kabe. He's going to help him push towards that tier 2 so much faster. Xiong is on his way up there, along with Icon. Once again, he might look to turn this into a play. The rest of OMG are on the opposite side of the map. Xiong has got his teleport. Kabe gets the tier 2, but here comes Icon as well. He's going to land the taunt to keep him occupied. And now Icon is looping back around as Baron is being started out by Chao Gu, and suddenly OMG's play is getting turned on its head. Yes, OMG know that it's happening, but can they stop it? Can they steal it? The tidal wave misses. Alone had one job. He eats the arrow. The huge hit. The Baron's so low. World 6 is oh, not no. able to steal it. He's in the pit right now. And it seems like he's now in a whole world of trouble. Kabe is going to try to follow him over the side. Shockwave okay. reads it well in advance. Clint follows. That's a quick two kills for Chao Gu, and they have got the Baron buff now. Yeah, the two kills, the bait into getting five as well. Five is known death very well. Zero, seven, and eight. Very sad for him. But Chao Gu nets themselves a Baron, and now they can really start to net this game over. This, this seems like it's very tough, especially with the poke coming out of it alone to be able to come back from this. And just to take control of this one, just took it the um, Ollie's Nami ulti misses through. I guess SMLZ probably had his Edge of Night proc. They're, they're ha that had to be it. But yeah, they weren't there in time. 
they were coming in, they were just in transition from the bottom lane, so that was a perfect time for Chaoku to start this up. Let's just take a look at Clit here. Boom! Ah. Yeah, and it was able to get it uh, right, able to kind of combo off of uh, Orianna's ulti. With that, we've got a quick recall out of Chaogu to top themselves off and pick up a few more items as they head back towards that bottom tier two, excuse me, bottom inhibitor turret mm -hmm. to crack that early push priority on that side of the map should Elder Dragon come into play. And so, uh, guess what Clit has? Clit has Phantom Dancer, so he's definitely a beast. And oh man, he's, he's doing it. He wants to just get in there and auto. It feels good when you have the attack speed underneath you, so yeah. this time he's he uh, instead of being the combo graves, he's just gonna go in there. Uh, God, the arrows. Uh, give him the shotgun. Just do so much. Kave not able to find Xiang. Instead, he's gonna have to bring the minion wave from a long way across the other side of the map. Still got to stand united as equalizer is used to clear the minion wave. Clid doing some work here. Excuse me, they took the elder dragon. They already took the elder yeah, dragon. Yeah. They must have taken it during the replay. As Chao Gu were in fact not going to be lax and looking for the recall. Doin be doing some work to the turret as Clid and Alone sitting very far back. They don't want to take any chances getting flanked by Rise. They're just gonna yeah, heal up here. There's no reason for them to back away. They've got a, an Elder Enhanced Ocean Dragon along with that Redemption to top themselves off. Some harass finds Doin but the inhibitor turret finally goes down. Now pushing on to the inhibitor itself. Doinbi is doing some work standing in the front. Bakabe joined up with the rest of his team. He's going to do some work to answer. Snare onto Doinbi, but he's on his early. World 6 gets the kick, but will pay for his life. Nothing comes out of it. Yeah, the inhib has long done. since gone down alone. Looking for an opportunity, but finds only retreat instead. The inhib is dead, and Chaogu retreat. Yeah, so Clid was just able to flash out of World 6's engage entirely. So that was just... Chaogu are far too strong right now. Elder Dragon strong, able to walk in. That one gambit that we're waiting for, for World 6 to get that Lee Sin kick, is not going to turn into anything. So maybe now, I mean, Clay doesn't have Flash anymore, but if he plays it uh, safely, and if he gets a kick on either Doing B alone, Ali doesn't mean anything because they also have all Flash up, so they can't really bank on World 6 anymore. It has to be, uh, you know, that Jin ulti starting it up, Shi Young's ulti going forward. They're waiting for the setup to go through, and with Rylai's finished up right now, Xiang is pretty beastly. He has his full items ready, so he does a lot of damage. It looks like the Rabadons was also finished for Doinby as well, so despite the early hitch in his build, he's going to start doing some damage now. Luden's Rabadon's Void Staff. That's a massive wave. Three Cannon Minions strong. Yeah, they're bringing in this Baron buff as Elder Dragon wears off. Icon's going to try to get some wave clear on all of these juicy, juicy... Oh, okay. Look at the bounce on that. I feel like I was watching Pinfall as World 6 tries to get into the back. They found Aliza's support, but at what cost? They've lost their jungler. Definitely not worth. They find some harassment to Doinby as well. And with the Ocean Drake, it's going to take a long time for him to top himself off. Jin does so much damage. They would have walked in if Doon B had not been chunked out entirely. And that was just off of Jin traps? That was ridiculous. So yeah. at this point, point I, in I think time, he also ate like a fourth bullet as well. Yeah, probably. We'll have to like uh, take a look at that one. But overall, he is doing a chunk of damage at this point of the game. Yeah, SMLZ playing so patient. 4, 0, and 6. As you said, going for the super long range Jin. Now that he's got the rapid fire cannon. So he's going to sit back, use the ultimate, toss out the Deadly Flourish, try to get like one auto attack, yep. sit back, recharge the Rapid Fire Cannon. <laughs> the classic Jin. That's you. The, the true sniper, effectively. Yeah, and so th that's, wh that's why setup is so clear uh, and needed here. As you mentioned, he's starting to just really go back towards the purchases on Doombi. He's got himself the Rapid on Death Cap. And the range, we, we keep going back to it. Right now, Doombi does a lot of damage. Clear cut, he, his ulti will just burn a man down. Oh yeah. Uh, alone right here has a lot of range to his name as well and Clid if he sees that will just use his ulti it's the easiest double kill of his life. So I mean OMG they have to really get the setup correctly. The setup has to be proper Jin ulti into Rumble ulti and maybe they can walk forward on that. If they don't get it if Rumble ulti falters if Jin ulti doesn't mean anything then it just becomes that much harder for them to even come back into this game. Mm -hmm. The setup is so very important for this upcoming fight. As 44 minutes in, it's probably going to be the decider. Baron is going to be up in 90 seconds, and you can see Chaogu already pushing in the top lane, already many deep wards onto that top side of the map. So they are going to see OMG as they slowly encroach forward. And if you take a look at OMG's vision, it's all peppered on the bottom side. The closest ward to the Baron pit is on the far side of red. 
So yeah, they definitely have to reposition that. Baron is going to be the go-to uh, objective at this point. Sure, the Nexus, I mean, the inhib in the bottom lane is up, which is a big point in which Chagu can definitely look to pressure towards that uh, Baron. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a question. I guess right now you can see that Xiang is just going to be pushing out this wave. That's going to be his job, and he's going to look to TP in if needed. But that's gonna be that's gonna feels re feel really bad for Rumble because his TP in is pretty bad. Yeah. He just wants to be there to start. Teleport equalizer. Yeah, that's uh, not what we're looking for. Oh, World Six spotted out. Luckily though, he's nice and tanky at this point in the game. Dead man's guardian angel icon on the far side. And Shen is definitely split pushing right now. He's already started up on it. So right now, OMG are on a timer. They need to do something now. They need to send someone to deal with the Shen, or else he could actually just continue to split push with that super minion. Yeah, the clock is ticking. Defensive pings going out on the side lanes as Chagu again playing that split pressure game that they are so good at, that they are so comfortable with. And Kabe pushes the minion waves in and ducks out of vision. They found World 6 on the top side of the map, however, as he catches that large minion wave before Icon can make it there. Chaogu already prepped and ready. They're in the pit when the Baron spawns. They gotta start on it now. Shen has full control of this bottom lane. Ooh, that's a big hit. You can already see SMLZ getting some damage across with that deadly flourish. Just the W. Doin okay. B. Shockwaves five. The poor guy just wants to play some League of Legends. Doin B. He's not gonna get that chance. It's just not gonna happen. <sighs> he didn't even ult himself. I don't think he knew to. He probably just thought he had the He's ability like, to get fine. out of there. fine. I took the shockwave. Oh, God, there's more. He didn't ult. He didn't use flash. Yeah. I mean, that was just an opportunity. He It was a missed opportunity over there. So now, oh, OK. Wait yeah. a minute. It's five versus four right now. Chaogu shove up the mid lane. Doinbi, it's a huge amount of poke from SMLZ again. As Xiang is trying to keep Kabe occupied with that mid lane pressure, Chaogu could be setting up for something else. Yeah. Or perhaps just resetting instead. Yes, they took the kill, but what of it? So they want to reset. Here's the biggest point. If these resets keep coming down because of the poke coming from Jin, Jin's doing so much damage as it's late into the game, and he has full six items. So if he finds himself consistently doing it, then OMG has a massive opportunity. It doesn't matter if they're 5k gold behind. Yeah. These picks mean so much. So this is going to be incredible to see if OMG can come back into this one. At this point in the game, gold doesn't really matter so much. Yeah, especially since the like starting Baron could be a death trap for Chagu. OMG can just you know, layer down Jin ulti and rumble on Baron pit. In fact, they're taking control cheekily around the Baron pit. Yeah, the recalls out of Chagu are gonna let OMG take some vision on that side, but Kabe continues to shove on that bottom side of the map. Once again, Icon is racing his way over there to try to deal with that Shen, but well aware of it, Kabe playing back. Ping's now going back to that Baron as Chaogu race forward, set up a control ward, but the it. high value ward is going to spot Ali on the outside. Deadly Flourish gets some damage as Doinbi takes to the skies to make sure he can see it. Once no. again, the curtain call fires up. Doinbi's shield has been popped, but he uh, has got another fourth bullet. Hits alone and brings him to half. He's immediately topped right back up by Ali. Yeah, that's fair. He should be able to heal back up. But Nami does have his red, her red trinket. She should have been able to just pop it and see these wards being lit up here, but didn't use it. Probably didn't even think of it. So that was just an opportunity where Chagu could have done it. Now she pops it. So there we go. The, the wards are getting cleared out. Yeah, finally the vision gets sweeped from OMG. Chagu, second time's the charm. Yeah, this should be a lot easier for them. Blue trinkets are the only thing you can hope for. Rise has his. The redemption is being dropped. Oh, that was close. Down <laughs> to 500 health. It was the smite from Clid. But Baron is secured once again for Chao Gu. They're pinging now on that mid tier, uh, excuse me, mid tier three, the inhibitor. Mm -hmm. And maybe going to top themselves off with one final recall as Kabe heads top and alone is topping himself off. Yeah, so if, if uh, Nami's going to head back, maybe everyone else, it's within their intention to do the same. So everyone is doing the same. Uh, Chagu with Baron. This could be the time to end the game. I mean, right now, Kabe's already setting himself at the top side of the map. It could be the within. Uh, come on, man. Just do it. All right. Ali's just having a good time. 49 minutes into the game. Very patient play from Chagu as the Elder Dragon is up in 30 seconds. They've got the Baron buff. They've got Kabe split pushing. But instead of focusing on those inhibs, they're focusing on what's going to win them the game here by denying OMG everything they can. Tragically, that's not what wins the game. Yep. Nexus is what wins the game. 
That's what Chaku is going for. I mean, the inhib is open. They're sending four man strong towards the inhib. And they just need to wait a little bit so Shen can catch up. Because right now he's doing the exact same. So it needs to be Rumble who can match him. And if that's the case, then Chaku is in a great position. There they go. Seeing a few folks head up top towards Kabe. They decide to turn onto the Elder Dragon instead. Once again, the second Elder Dragon Baron combo for Chao Gu. As Clid picks it up. And once again, 50 minutes in, Chao Gu are set to besiege OMG. Last time, however, that ended up at a, in a fight in Chao Gu's favor. Yeah, ping's coming down. Every sum is available. So everybody would be starting fresh. This is going to be interesting to see. World 6, he's definitely looking for it. Yeah, Icon's sitting there. He's got his realm warp. So too does World 6. Sonic Wave gets a big kick on the Clid, but Doink is still there. That's the ah, Guardian yeah. Angel pop instantly. Five has got his own GA. He's had enough of these shenanigans. Kabe joined the fight just in time to watch five and world six go down, but the inhib has died. Ja uh, Doinby flings himself oh. forward. Shockwave on the icon. Equalizer is going to do a lot of damage to alone, but it is not enough as the minions are on the Nexus turrets. Wait, OMG can defend this. SMLZ, Xiang, Rise, these are their damage dealers. And you know what? Jin does too much damage at this point, and Shagu took far too much. So they need to back away from this once again. Able to take the inhib at the very least. Yeah, but Chao Gu are so very respectful. They're not going to risk it. As you said, Icon and SMLZ are still up along with Xiong. He gets one good flame spitter. And that is going to be a really hurting Chao Gu. Oh my oh god, goodbye. Speaking of Xiong, that guy is not spitting flame now. In the heavens. <laughs> From the sepia tone beyond. But the middle inhibitor goes down. This time it's up to Icon and SMLZ. Can they do what Xiong could not? There's a redemption. That's going to be the Chains of Corruption there onto he Icon. He's knocked up. The GA is caught. SMLZ dies to the CC. He's able to get cleared, but it is not enough. And Icon now is also dead. Five and World Six have respawned, and they're going to try to turn this into a successful fight. Kabe is there as well. He's kicked back. Doin being cleared are dead, so it's up to alone to finish this off. The only coming in. With real AD. He turns now onto the Nexus turret. Finally, it falls. And they're going to try to get onto the Nexus itself. No amount of defense is going to save them from this. And Chao Gu take game number one against OMG. Yeah, it was 50 minutes long, but they finally take it. They wanted to play it safely. Elder Dragon after Elder Dragon, Baron after Baron. It really does weigh on the minds of OMG. Take a look at that. They thought they had the opportunity to come back into the game, and they did. They had a lot of opportunities, and they were playing very hard, especially SMLZ, but it was just not enough. That was a grueling match for OMG to go through. But joining us in once again is Richard Pulse Camp. Hey, what's up? Hey. So, you know what hurts my soul? World what? 6 playing in ELO Hell. That's <laughs> <laughs> like World 6 had such a good performance in that game. So many great kicks, great setups, and then Xiang just walks out of the base and dies, and then his bot lane just doesn't do anything, and then his mid lane Icon doesn't do anything in the game, he doesn't pop off like we were expecting, yeah. and that just goes back to what we were saying at the start of the game, which was QG just have better players. They have more players who can turn up to the playing field, and yes, alone did a billion damage in that game, literally a billion damage. 37.9k um, <laughs> equals a billion damage, yep. but you look at Kavi in the top lane, Clid, um, and join B, they were doing a lot of the heavy lifting. And when you're one versus three, what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. And I think uh, it comes down to um, the support as well. Five had probably his worst game um, of the split. It came down to he was constantly looking to ward alone. And uh, to be fair to him, there was a lot of range in which if he ever went for it alone, then he would just get popped by anybody on the enemy team. But he should have been aware of it. And there were uh, definitely times in which he could have flashed away, used his ulti, but he was just unresponsive and he died. Yeah, and you could definitely see that from the OMG players in the post game as well. They looked defe defeated, not just in terms of like, oh, we lost the game, but like, oh man, they lost. Yeah, uh, it was a crushing defeat, Dom. And it's like you were saying, so, so many of these fights were actually started by OMG and looked really good. We're going to take a look at the replay that really illustrates that point because look at the start of this. It's an engage from OMG. We have all the ultimates coming down. Fantastic yeah. setup from World 6. And then what's this? QG turn it around. And this is the story time after time after time where OMG's engages go awry because they're mechanically outplayed by QG. Yeah, and that's really hard to go in. I mean, just take a look at Rise. Rise didn't do much at all in that fight. And he was just trying to be a little bit too greedy on the subject that he was going towards. He was going straight for the squishies, not going straight for the people who were right in front of him. And when you do that, I mean, it's fair in that sense because he saw the combos come through. 
But at that point, there's a lot of pacing back and forth of him just not putting uh, outputting DPS. It seems like we saw a lot of hesitation from OMG as a whole over the course of that game. Sure, SMLZ did huge damage with that Jin, but Icon on the rise, there were so many times where he would roam bottom with Xiong, be just on the other side of the wall, ready to gank Kabe, and then he would wait for 10 seconds before backing up and heading back to join the rest of his team. So despite the early uh, indications that OMG were ready to pull the trigger over the course of the game, they grew more and more less, uh, uh, I guess... Uh, Meaningful or impactful yes, in that thank one. You. And so I think that uh, one of the biggest points, I think it's fine to be faking roams to us sometimes, but at some point, even when they went for legitimate loans, they would never, I mean, getting caught up by wards, that's not much you can do about that. But I think it comes down to how creative you are in terms of searching for those roams. And uh, time and time again, they would get caught out constantly in rotation. That's great to Chaogu, by the way, is that they're showcasing a lot of strengths that we really highlight from WE is that they are able to play really defensively when uh, OMG are looking for those plays. But overall, yeah, OMG, it comes down to, I guess, vision is a big one. Uh, top lane, Xiang did get picked up a lot uh, once, I believe, in the top lane, and there was just no way for him to see it. The problem for OMG is there's too many things that you need to fix. You can take a dartboard with many things written on it. With like vision, we need to fix mid game, we need to fix draft, we need to fix early game. Throw a dart and it's like, yes, we need to fix that as well. Like <laughs> it doesn't, it actually doesn't matter what you look at. And when you game f go from game one to game two, it's just like, well, we just got outplayed. We can't just become a better team in 20 minutes. That doesn't happen. So it's a r really tough when you look yeah. at a team who doesn't necessarily have a style. Like the games we saw earlier, so it's like, oh, they just need to adapt and do this differently. Well, there's not a single thing that they can evolve. They just need to look better across the board. And that's what QG showed us. They showed us just a better game. Yeah, so much vision that allowed them to set it up. There was actually one moment uh, in the game where I believe they saw OMG setting up a sort of a death brush by the side of Baron. Clid stepped forward, Doinby right behind him outside of vision, Kabe ready to teleport. That was like classic Doinby and Swift with V teleporting in from behind. But it's in fact the new Chagu who pull it together. Kabe is going to be the guy who gets the MVP. I don't think he saw much of his team over the course of that game, but yeah. still going to get that. I mean, it's one of those points where you can it's, it's difficult to find an MVP once again, but Kabe was the constant, like, uh, uh, pressure. His dives were massive in terms of when, like, even when he got his GA, sure, yeah, it's going to even be uh, a, a much better for his team, but they were much more decisive, and it was around his uh, taunts. So, uh, especially in his split push, I think his split push was incredibly impactful. That's just a team decision, though. But regardless, like, he was an impactful player. So. Yeah, while I agree, and, like, he had some really good flash taunts in that game, a lot of the turnarounds that came from those team fights was an Oriana shock wave hitting, or it was, like, a, a turnaround from the jungle, clear just blasting some nerd, you know? Yeah. And that's really yeah. where uh, the turnarounds came from. So, yes, I applaud Carbon. and I always want to give it to the top laner because we deserve credit, <laughs> damn it. But I actually think in that one it was more towards the jungle mid lane. Yeah, well, hopefully Kabe will be able to show us in the next game that he actually deserves the MVP, and they're, we're, they're just preemptively rewarding him. Mm -hmm. um, and, but of course, Chagu still have got a lot of good things to take away from that. OMG are going to have to show some resilience in this matchup. Obviously, the fan vote was heavily in their favor, so the fans are on their side. Can they pull it through for them? I think so, and it comes to comfort. I mean, he wasn't comfortable on Rise. Icon wasn't. I want to maybe just go back to Ari. Let's see how it works. Yeah, we're certainly going to have to find out. We're going to go and take a quick break while we get ready for game number two. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.